Oh, hello. Sorry, I was just trying to track the version of the app that we are looking at. And that's exactly what this video is about, tracking versions that the user installed on their device with Xamarin Essentials. Let's go. Now here we find ourselves in Visual Studio 2019 for Mac. On the left, you can see a file new Xamarin Forms application. On the right, you can see the um, Android emulator. Just, you know, it, it's good to give Android some love from time to time as well. Um, this works the same on iOS and UWP, um, but I chose to do it in Android for this time. Um, so you can see the file new Xamarin Forms application running on the right on the Android emulator. Um, and let's update the title straight away. So let's make this the version tracking uh, sample. Let's save that. And with the power of hard reload, it will update automatically on our running application, um, which is still something very cool to point out. XAML hard reload um, does that for you. And it will even be better with .NET hard reload, which allows you to change actual code in your debug session. Okay. Enough of the other stuff. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this version tracking um, with Xamarin Essentials. Let's first talk a little bit about how the version numbers are composed in your application. So let's go over to our Solution Explorer right here. And for Android, we have to go to our um, Properties folder and into our Android Manifest XML. Um, if you find this in the .NET MAUI context and you want to go to the Platforms folder, um, then Android, and then there still will be the Android Manifest.xml file and all will work exactly the same. Um, so here we go to the graphical editor. Now you can also do this in the XML file um, and edit it directly. Um, here you have the version number and the version name. Um, so one is the build, I think that's the version number and the other one is the version name. Um, that is the actual version. We'll see that in the APIs in a little bit. Um, so whenever you change these, that will change also um, the results that you're getting from Xamarin Essentials in this case. Um, now let's see it for iOS, go over to the solution again. And for iOS, we need to look at our info P list. Um, and here we have kind of the same thing. Uh, we have this bundle version right here. And I think the other thing is not specified. So let's go over to the graphical editor. Um, so here we have the version and the build. Um, again, these two fields are the ones that you need to edit uh, to get different results in um, Xamarin Essentials. So I think for iOS, it's a little bit different. I think the version field allows you to enter um, any string value basically, where on Android, it has to be um, a integer. Um, but you know, so there's slight differences. A lot of developers try to have this in sync to with just the integer values. Um, and that's something I would suggest you do as well. But you know, if you want to do things differently, that's totally up to you. Um, so but that's where the version numbers are coming from. And that's also the things that you need to increment whenever you provide new um, builds to the app stores, right. Um, so let's just park this for a little moment and go over to Xamarin Essentials. I already have the Xamarin Essentials library updated in my solution, it comes with the file new Xamarin Forms application these days. Um, and for .NET MAUI, it's incorporated in Microsoft.MAUI.Essentials. It's right there for you to use. Um, so let me remove all these labels basically, except for the first one. Um, and I'm going to add a couple of new ones. I'm going to give this an X name so I can reference it in my code behind. Let's name this current um, and remove the text for now. And I'm going to copy this one and name this previous. And I'm going to do this with um, is new. I'll, I'll tell you all about what this is in a minute. So don't worry. Um, so now we have three labels where you don't see them. So the UI is updated, but we don't see anything yet. Um, and also a good thing to note whenever you want to start doing this version tracking is to um, at a little line of initialization, you have to do that early on in your application so that you know, everything is initialized early on, um, and you will get the results properly. So a good point in Xamarin Forms application is to do that in your um, app XAML CS. So we have the app XAML where all your resources are the app XAML CS is kind of the starting point of your Xamarin Forms application. And in your app constructor, you can say Xamarin dot essentials dot version tracking dot track and this enables 
enables the whole tracking because what the tracking does in kind of the background is just read the version information from your application and write that into a file, uh, which is the same way that the Xamarin Essentials Preferences APIs does that. So whenever you save a preference, um, it will be saved to a file somewhere in the sandbox of your application. That is the same thing that also works um, with this tracking. It just works this with the same APIs as the preferences. So um, also the life cycle of these version tracking information is the same as the preferences. So that means whenever you uninstall the application, all the version tracking is gone as well. Um, I think for Android, there's some auto backup going on. So it might be backed up to the cloud and be brought back whenever you update the installation. But go check out the documentation. There's links for that down below in the video description. Um, go check it out. We need this little line to uh, initialize the version tracking, but whenever we got that done, um, then we can go over to our main page.xaml and let's go to the code behind. And then here I can say current.text is, um, let's do a little string interpolation here. And I can say, actually, let me add here using xamarin.forms.essentials here at the top so that I don't have to do that all the time. Why is this giving me squigglies? Um, oh, it's not an Xamarin Forms, it's just Xamarin Essentials. Um, and I can now just do version tracking dot current build or current version, or you can see if it's the first launch for this current build or for this current version. Um, actually, let's check out what other APIs are in here. You can get the whole history of versions that are in here, uh, which is a collection of strings. You can get the current build, the current version, um, the first installed build, the first installed version is the first launch ever. So you can detect if this is the very first time that a user has launched the application, which can be useful to um, trigger a kind of onboarding screen screen, if you will, um, or you can check if it's the first launch for a build or a version so that you can pop up a kind of new onboarding screen for only the new versions that are, um, sorry, for only the new features that are in this version, um, right? So that is use cases that you could, could do, or maybe you have this little local database with SQL light and you need to do some migrations based on the versions. Um, that is all stuff that you can do with this version tracking. So there's a lot in here. Um, go check out what you need. I will show a couple of them right now and how they work together. Um, but all the rest, you know, it's always up to you to make something beautiful out of these APIs. Um, so let's just say current build and I'm going to add another one version tracking dot current version. And let's do the same for previous. So I'm going to get the previous one as well. So you can just get one version from, from the previous one um, and see what build and what version that was just to see where you're coming from because you know you could have released versions um, that the user never installed. So you can see like, hey, I have this version and suddenly they installed this one, um, but there were three versions in between. So I need to do the migrations of my database for all these versions, right? Or I need to show uh, my user all these new features that are between these um, two versions, right? That's all use cases that you can think of. Um, so whenever we do this, I need to stop and rerun the application right here. And whenever we do, we see the app coming back up and it will show us the current build and the current version. And kind of obviously it won't show us the previous build and a previous version because there wasn't one. Well, actually there was one, but I didn't do the version tracking yet. So that's why it's important to initialize that version tracking early on in your application. Um, now here it is, it's coming back up. We can see it's one, it's 1.0. And if we go back to our um, Android manifest that perfectly lines up with this version number and the version name right here, which is one and 1.0. So if I stop the application right now and I make the version name 1.1 and the version number two, and I save that and I run the application again, now we should see that the previous version um, switched to one and 1.0 and now our current version is two and 1.1 and our application is coming back up and boom, I was right. Woohoo! always good whenever a demo works out as you expected. So that is how you can do it. it. It works the same for iOS. If I would show that right now and update my plist, it would give you the exact same result. Now, one more thing that I want to show you is whenever you go back to our main page example CS, and let's add that little is new thing. So is new dot text um, is new version. And actually, let's just do this only if version tracking dot um, is 
first launch for so here you have the first launch for build or current build or current version so you have these all kinds of um, variations of the same thing here you can is first launch for build and you can specify your own build string if that's what you want um, or you can just go to this property where it says like hey is this the, uh, it's a boolean is this a first launch for the current build right so that's whenever a version has been updated uh, to the current build and if this is the first launch for it so um, let's do it for the first build um, so you can have some nuance in that if uh, if that's what you want because it's kind of like the the build is kind of like the minor version and the version is your your major version so that's kind of you know you can determine yourself what your versioning strategy is and depending on that you can implement whatever this is um, so this will only show up whenever we have this um, update going on so if I should stop and restart it right now then nothing would happen because it's still the same version um, but whenever Whenever I go back into my Android manifest right here and I say uh, make this three because I set it to the build so I don't need to touch the the version right here and I restart the application then now we should see this label which says hey this is a new version and the app is coming back up so let's see if that is actually correct yes new version so you can see I did the update now and it says new version so this would be the point where you would show that new feature screen or your database migration or whatever you want to use this for and that's all there is to it to actually track the versions that uh, a user has installed on their device which is pretty cool if you think about it because this is such a small kind of feature but it's really really powerful because um, like I said and this is the use case that I keep coming back to uh, because I see it a lot implemented on apps as well is where they will just pop this new screen with hey this is new in this version and as a user I really like that I love to know what is new in the application um, so uh, you know please implement this in all your apps this way and let me know in your apps um, what is new actually just put down in the comments below what are apps that you have and um, I will go check them out should I should I review them is that a thing that we should do I don't know maybe I'm just going off on a tangent right here um, thank you so much for watching one of my videos please click the like button if you've actually liked this video subscribe to my channel because then you'll be notified automatically of the amazing new content that I'm putting out here done at Maui examine essentials done at Maui essentials examine community toolkit all the cool things and maybe some other C sharp goodness .net, git name all the buzzwords let me know in the comments what you want to see and I'll be sure to make a video on that because that's how I am um, and of course I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.